So now, in this video, we're going to look at the current limiting diode. So, I only have these. There's uh, two of them. This one doesn't seem to be as close to one milliamp as uh, that one right there. So, I'm going to use the one that's uh, doing better. Just want to point that out. This one's looks like it's in the 0.8 uh, milliamps of current. That one's 0.9 something, probably 0.97, almost a uh, milliamp of current. But in any case... We have S there, it's actually a surface mount component. So I got this from the Joe Knows Electronics Semiconductor Kit a long time ago. They may look uh, different, but that is the uh, component right there. And I was hoping the light was in a better uh, spot. We'll move it. Um, but yeah, there is a uh, band on that right side. There we go, now you can see it. And you can see uh, 102 on there right there. So that's the cathode right there, the bar that you see on the schematic it comes to uh, when you're looking at this side the pin on the right and then the anode goes over to the pin on the left I don't believe that middle pin is connected to anything so that's the actual component there though they just mounted it on a board for you so that you can easily plug it into a breadboard pretty straightforward so again it should pass about one milliamp of current but um, you know if you look at the data sheet it's not a precision component because the data sheet I looked at said for the uh, S102 uh, right there, you could have a minimum of 0.88 milliamps. So I think when I measured the other one in the bag, it said uh, 0.87. And um, so yeah, it was uh, like close to uh, the, the minimum there. Um, up to a maximum of 1.3. So you're not gonna get an exact one milliamp of current as far as I can tell with uh, maybe any of these unless you're Luckily enough to uh, get one. So we are going to measure current. Of course, this is a surface mount component. As I said before, that's what the S stands for. And uh, on the bag, it said T. And uh, that means that uh, that's how they came in a package, like a whole bunch of them, how they were connected together before they got uh, separated. So, you know, not something you need to worry about when you are designing your circuit or something. So we're going to set the meter to measure milliamps of current. We need a gap between the uh, cathode there and ground to uh, measure current. So this is with no load. I have the power supply set to 5 volts right there. So voltage from the power supply isn't what sets the current at all. You just need to have enough current to provide all the power that uh, all the uh, components in the circuit need. That's the uh, main thing. So as you put more components in series with it, you uh, will need, you know, a higher voltage. So there you go. It's a uh, pretty close to uh, one milliamp of current right there. I'm just going to grab a red LED and uh, looks like this got uh, knocked out of place a bit. And we're also going to pass uh, current through the uh, red LED right there. Basically the same current there, even though we added a load, we had no load at all. And now we added a load and green LED is closer. I'm going to put that in series with the red one. Now, of course, we're going to fall short of one milliamp of current because the LEDs alone need five volts. And that's what I set the supply for right there. So it went down. Green LEDs are a lot brighter at the same amount of current as a red LED. That's another way to uh, prove that point. So um, maybe six volts will be enough. Let's go back. Try not to drag this out too much. Um, but, uh, this will give us kind of an indication. Yeah, looks like, um, yeah, still not probably doing as good as, uh, we could. So, I'm guessing 7 volts will definitely be enough right now. So, maybe we should have at least a couple extra volts for the uh, current regulating diode uh, right there. So, yeah, right now, this could just be, you know, that, uh, it might change just slightly because, of the load and uh, and whatnot. Got a third one, yeah, it looks like it went up a spec. But again, at six volts, we're getting practically the same amount of current. So maybe you need at least like a couple volts for the current regulating diode. And, um, you know, an additional voltage for whatever the load is gonna need. So in this case, the LEDs drop a specific uh, voltage. If you were using a resistive load, the resistor is going to need whatever voltage it takes that resistor to pass the amount of current that uh, you're doing. In this case, one milliamp of current. Um, be aware of that. 
So now, that brings us over to this part of the diagram. I got a 5.1 volt Zener diode. I looked at the uh, part number, and uh, it's uh, very small. I had to use a loop to look at that. But in any case, it's reverse bias right there. When you set a current through a Zener diode, so the way that they work is when a current is passing through them, you get their Zener voltage across them right there. The voltage can build up to their Zener voltage, and then current starts flowing, so voltage cannot go up. It's going to pass current as needed to uh, level off that voltage. But it does shift slightly based on how much current is flowing through it, um, especially the 5.1 uh, volt Zener diode. Some Zener diodes, when they get farther away from this 5 volt, 5, uh, volt area, either higher or lower, they tend to drift even more as uh, current changes. And um, so, again, we will uh, grab the uh, multimeter. And one thing to keep in mind is it says, I don't know if this is on a heat sink or something, because the component's pretty small, but it says 500 milliwatts for the surface mount component. And uh, if it says E instead of S right there, that uh, says uh, 300 milliwatts. So I hope I said milliwatts there for 500. Definitely not 500 watts. Um, we got 300 milliwatts for the leader component. And also, we'll do the part number right now. So when you read the part number, this is one zero and then two more zeros for a thousand. But that's in microamps. A thousand microamps is one milliamp. So that's what uh, that number means. And uh, we'll grab a multimeter because now we're interested in voltage right there. So I already have the power supply set to uh, seven volts and we're going to set the meter to V for voltage. It's auto ranging. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to move the red probe for anything other than high current. So pretty easy multimeter to use. Of course it has to be at the uh, DC setting. But um, I got seven volts at the supply. Pretty straightforward and measuring voltage is pretty much always safe. The uh, main danger with uh, measuring voltage is that you could bypass a component. If I touch uh, both ends of the Zener diode right there, current's just going to go through the meter instead of the Zener diode. We have current limited with the current source there, current regulating diode. So I wasn't worried about a short circuit um, there, but it is uh, possible. And uh, for some reason, I was getting no voltage. I must not have had a good connection. So there we go. We got 5.062 volts. So again, it's not an exact component. We could raise the current a little bit to get to exactly 5.1 volt, um, but the main takeaway is we're, we're close to 5.1 volts. And uh, if you set a current, that means you're trying to prevent it from changing. And again, we only got one milliamp of current uh, going. So you can see one there. If you times that by 16, it would say 16. So 0 0.016 watts of power. So not even 100 milliwatts of power. We're nowhere near getting um, the uh, components too hot. And uh, the components are actually dividing up uh, the voltage. The Zener dial, there you can see, we uh, more than doubled the voltage and the uh, currents stay in the same. So the Zener voltage is not shifting as we raise the supply voltage. Didn't matter. Again, it's a one milliamp current of current. So I can go all the way to 30 volts. That's the maximum for this power supply um, right there. So we got 30 times 0 0.001, so one right there would be 30. We're nowhere near overheating uh, any component right there because the voltage is gonna remain steady across the uh, Zener diode because current is steady right there. And uh, current's exactly the same. So we went uh, from seven volts to over 28 volts, over four times the voltage and the Zener voltage is there holding steady because the uh, current regulating diode is maintaining one milliamp of current through the circuits. We can look at that as well. I gotta open the circuit to do so. Set this to measure uh, milliamps. So again, this is not uh, you know complex or anything, but setting a current is often important for circuits. In this case, for keeping the Zener diode, Zener voltage steady, even as the supply voltage changes a lot. If you just use a resistor, and it looks like it did go up a little bit with the higher voltage there. Remember before I was saying 0.97 when I did uh, this uh, measurement just to ground. We can also just go directly to ground right there. So it looks like the higher voltage in, impacts a little bit, but uh, maybe we're like 3% uh, higher amount of current flowing through. Practically the same. So, anyway. 
hopefully you found that interesting. Um, this was kind of long and not very complex, but a good thing to demonstrate. Now, I always keep uh, usually 20 milliamps of current on here unless I need a different amount of uh, maximum current for the most part because 20 milliamps of current probably will not uh, damage anything if I accidentally short around something as I said before one danger with the uh, probe of the uh, multimeter if you're measuring voltage is uh, maybe one part of the probe will touch one part of the circuit and then another part of the probe will touch another one and current will short circuit through the probe instead of a component or something that's going to help uh, limit current and um, you know so probably not going to measure something uh, damage anything measuring current but if you accidentally make a short circuit with the probe that's not measuring the current that's uh, letting the current pass through the probe that could damage something but otherwise measuring voltages is almost always completely safe as long as you don't work with dangerous voltages so in any case that's it Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.